Sweet. Our next speaker is a futurist, which is an awesome title. It's like she can predict what's going to happen. She talks about it. She's a strategist. She's an entrepreneur. She is a guest on the Innovation at Work radio show, if you guys remember that. She's the founder of Dylan 5 LLC. She's the author of two books, Dyslexia's Competitive Edge, and you posted what? That's how you, that's how you pronounce the title, right? Her next book, will, uh, The Digital Prairie, will be released later this year. Give it up for Tiffany Sunday. Good evening. It is great to be here at Ignite DFW. I am sharing a story this evening that is very important to me, and I think every dyslexic team needs to know, because we don't talk about it much. It is the connection between dyslexia and entrepreneurship. In fact, six years ago, Professor Julie Logan did a study that has changed the world for dyslexics. What she found was amazing. She discovered that 35% of the business owners are dyslexic. So I'm looking out over the crowd and I'm thinking, okay, there's mostly startup people here, so that means there's a third that's dyslexic. That's pretty significant. But not only that, she found that they accelerated their companies faster, they held multiple companies, were gifted delegators, strong leaders, and they owned multiple companies. And so when you think about these people, Richard Branson comes to mind, Ted Turner, and many of the other great entrepreneurs that are dyslexic. But what's important is the teens need to understand that what they are going through right now in school is where it all starts. It starts now. And so that is my message. It starts when they're in school. And let me explain. When I was in school, I can remember back in kindergarten and first grade, I could not read. I could not write. I could not spell. And even language processing was very, very difficult. Our brains are wired differently, and so we have MRI studies that prove that now. But my brain was like, you know, I think we got this. It's just a little different. So, you know, I know Houston, we have a problem, but I think if we do some creative thinking, we'll figure this out. So looking back, I'm thinking, I really did start thinking like an entrepreneur because I went through, I don't know, 10,000 failed starts because I phonetically do not hear any sounds to decipher or decode to spell. So my brain goes, okay, since we can't spell and we can't read, we just memorize everything. Every word I've ever had to write or put on a sheet of paper on a keypad is by sheer memorization. And doing this, you become very tenacious, you develop a grit, and you think, okay, this is just going to be a lot harder than others, but I refuse to give up. And this is what dyslexic teens need to hear, that when you're in school right now, you are a startup. It becomes part of our DNA. It gets inside of our being. And so when we start a company when we're 12, like I did, it feels so dang comfortable. So that's what makes us successful. But most important, and what I think is, what I, you know, I wish I could just tattoo this to them, everything that you're going through right now is some of the most prized traits of entrepreneurship. You cannot teach grit. You cannot teach tenacity or perseverance. It is learned through sheer experience. But another thing dyslexic teens don't know is that there is a foundation to entrepreneurship, especially when you're wired here as a dyslexic. And there are three key components that they need to focus on. As I said, entrepreneurship is a mindset, especially if you're a dyslexic, regardless if you start a business inside a company or your own. But the foundation starts with creativity. It is how we solve our problems. In fact, I couldn't function without my creativity. If you'd asked me when I was 12 if I was going to be dyslexic or not, I would have probably tossed it away. Today, I'm like, no, no, no. I would never give up my dyslexia or my creativity. It is the foundation of everything I do and how I think. Most of you may know Skip Howard. Yeah, Skip just secured another patent. And he and I talked frequently about how we hacked the system using our creativity, which was the foundation within dyslexia. But we're also gifted problem solvers because, again, we think differently. And we have to solve problems since we were in kindergarten. So by the time you get to be 12 or 13, or like my son who's here now, 15, we've been solving problems a while. 
and so we become gifted abstract problem solvers. But another unique benefit and an advantage of dyslexia is that we have the ability to connect dots that others do not see. Steve Jobs speaks frequently, or he spoke frequently about this. And so my message is to dyslexic teens is focus on your strengths. Use the dyslexia talents to your benefit. Focus in the areas of entrepreneurship, innovation, creativity. Know that you can be a strong leader. Know that you are gifted at delegation. And most of all, go make a big darn dent on this planet. <laughs>